So please, Jarko, tell me also about actually the yellow team and what you doing there, please. Thank you, Thomas. And first of all, this is important, especially in Sweden. It's Jarko, it's not Jarmo. He's a different guy, but I guess you know him. <laughs> not me. And hey, welcome back. Thank you, because especially when I'm going to the conferences, usually the coffee breaks are the best places for the discussions. And whenever the discussion starts to be interesting, usually the coffee break ends, and then you have to go back to listen to some boring presentation about the yellow team in lock seals. But I'll try my best to provide you meaningful information. Here's something about my background. I'm not working for the center. I'm not part, part of the center. I work for the private company called Arctic Security from Finland. So if you are interested in victim notification, threat intel, threat feeds, automation, how to make situation awareness through that one in that topic, you can talk to me after the presentation. But this is about the luck seals. I've been yellow team leader since 2013. I guess we already know about the team colors already, so I can just use them instead of telling what the green team is doing or whatnot. So, the yellow team. These are basically the three main tasks what we have. There might be some historical reasons why the yellow team is independent from the white team, so the exercise control theme. But the main, at least from my point of view, the main thing the yellow team needs to provide is the information for the exercise leader. Whenever the exercise leader needs to make some kind of decision, yellow team needs to provide information so the decisions can be fact-based instead of gut feeling of the leader. Of course, important topics are provide feedback for the others. There are other teams who need information while they are doing their work in the in the exercise, we have like 300 people in Tallinn. They rely on information, at least partially what we are providing through our processes. But provide factual, meaningful information for the training audience. That's like the yellow team in a nutshell. Everyone likes the pictures and I went through the public pictures what we have from the exercise and I found this one. I cannot remember when this was this one was taken, but uh, there's some interesting things going on and I want to highlight them. For example, here's my yellow team on the left side and there's definitely something important going on between the green team, silver's team and our team. I don't know, even finger is pointing over there. So that's something we are interacting with all the teams, getting the meaningful information from them so that we can pro provide meaningful stuff for the Mr. White who's here. So Ryan Otis, he's the exercise leader. This guy, I don't know who he is. And uh, this is second guy who's actually quite important. He's the scoring master. So we have been talking about the scores, how they are basically like feedback mechanism. But because some of the teams think it's a competition, we have to keep also the scoring in balance. So this guy is responsible for that one. And the people at front, they are basically liaisons. So every blue team have liaison from the organizer side. And the idea is that if they have something out of problems which are like out of game or connectivity issues or something like that, these guys are basically the point, point of contacts for the blue teams and they will help the blue teams out if need be. But in this case, most likely some blue team has done something or they have made some kind of request related to scores. This liaison most likely is the one who's basically handling that blue team. I have provided information to Ryan and Ryan, is, Ryan has made the decision and now he's co communicating with the liaison so the blue team will get the reply for their request whatever that may have been, because I don't remember this situation at all. But yellow team in action. Okay, this is, yeah, I think if you don't 
remember anything from this presentation I else. This, is maybe, this may be the main thing, because many times monitoring and situation awareness gets mixed up. But I think there's a like clear difference between them. There, there's a lot of similarities between these topics, but they are different. So let's start with the monitoring. That's basically, and hey, you are ICS people, you should know. So if you have some kind of defined process, you put meters and stuff like that so you are able to monitor how the process is doing. If everything is green, the process is doing fine. So that's like the monitoring. But that's not situation awareness in a sense. I think in monitoring, make those screens green again, that's like the main goal. If it's red, you already have an idea what to do to make it green. But temperature of something or quantity of something, that's not like information you need on this other track, situation awareness. That's part of the decision making process. Someone needs to make the decision. He needs to have relevant information available so he can make the decision and follow the outcome of the decision. So even if it's kind of similar, but at the same time completely different. And yeah, this is my favorite thing when I'm setting up like situation pictures or something like that. I want to have them empty. They should be empty. But if there's something on that screen, it needs activities. It doesn't go away by itself. Someone needs to do something to make that screen empty again. Some kind of decisions and see how it affects on the situation. And hey, please interrupt me even during the presentation. So, I don't know, military guys, do you have different opinion about this one? I don't know. This is my opinion, but I can definitely stand behind this one. best way of doing the cyber defense. If we are the ones who make the assessment, we should know what's the best way of doing the defense, right? And some numbers you already had. Thousands of virtual machines. 80 red team objectives times 23 blue teams, hundreds of attacks. Blue teams, they can basically do whatever they want. What's the best response to any situation at any given time inside the exercise? And here's the answer. We don't know. <laughs> I would say it would be even arrogant to say that I can go to these guys and, hey, the thing you did with the PLC, uh -uh, you should have done this and this. Because, like I said, just imagine all the possible variations you might have. Blue teams have done something beforehand, Red team has done something differently. How the hell can I tell what should they be doing on that situation? How to make the assessment then? Whoa, this is broken. Let's see if I... Yeah, no. It doesn't work. Basically, in the middle, which you cannot see, there was this kind of uh, Unix command, cat slash dev slash random, then pipe to the scoring board. And that was actually from one of the blue team members that your scoreboard is just random numbers. It doesn't have any relevance. It wasn't you guys. No, it wasn't. It was Estonian. Nasty guy. No, we are not doing that. It's not random. We have clear idea behind that one. And basically what we are doing, how we make the assessment, we identify the key areas in context of lock seals, of course, but I think they apply for the real life partially as well. Identify the key elements of the exercise. Plan how to measure and observe them, what's going on on these areas, and then combine the information for the situation picture. This is actually... Again, my personal opinion, but this is the ranked order, which is the most important thing. Of course, 
you might say that there's the collaboration. It's building different elements. For example, the evaluation of the reporting happens through how meaningful the information is for the others and recipients. So the collaboration is there that even if you provide me meaningful reporting to you, it's not that valuable if the others cannot benefit out of that one. So no collaboration as a bullet over there in that sense. So availability and usability. My personal opinion is that that's the most important thing. Sorry, Sandra, it's not the defending against the attacks. It's only second. Like we had the keynote speak this morning from Norsk Hydro. If you lose the availability and usability, then it becomes cyber resilience exercise. What to do when you don't have the IT anymore? And that's not the way we want to <laughs> make the locked seals. It's not about how to manually adjust the valves or something like that. So availability and usability, that's the key. Systems need to be online and they need to be usable because then the red teams can have fun and then the blue teams can have fun. So that's the most important thing. Difference between availability and usability when we talk about them in context of the lock chills. Availability is something what we do on a network and agent level. That's like the technical means to check if the service is online available kind of thing. Does the email server reply to me kind of thing. And you have seen the picture about the network setup and usually there's like one to six different checks for each elements inside the network. Is the RDB open on a Windows workstation? Stuff like that. And usability, that's uh, more like higher level thing. We have end user simulation team. They will act like the normal users of that network. And for example, if you have the SCADA system, you are defending this. And people, human, who's actually trying the SCADA system, is it operational, does it work? Can I do my normal business with that one? If they can, that's fine. And if they cannot, do you know what they, they will do? Like in real life, they will open a ticket. And basically then the blue teams knows that there's some problem with the SCADA system. They have like 15 minutes time to react on that one and fix. And if they cannot do that one, then they start to get penalty because the ticket is still open and the users cannot use the system. So that's the difference between availability and usability. Defending against the attacks, that's like bread and butter, really important. You have to be able to detect them, mitigate them and push the enemy back. How do we do that one in lock chills? Do, do we collect all the logs? Well, Sandra actually revealed that one. Basically, because the red team is part of the organizer, we get the information from them. We know the campaign beforehand, we know the objectives, and when they are performing the attacks, if they are successful, they will provide the evidence and, okay, we think we were successful, we have the evidence over here, and then we can say that, okay, it's done. They have done it. We have all the information available. I know that's not real life. In real life, if you are defending, you don't have the access to the red team or the attacker's campaign. Wait a minute. Offensive cyber capabilities. Maybe it's real life. I don't know. I'm just working for the private sector. <laughs> reporting. Different kinds of reporting. Uh, Blue team already mentioned about them, and that's actually something yellow team is also doing in game. So we will make the assessment of the reporting the blue teams are doing. Main reports we are getting from them is the threat reporting. That's like technical level real-time reporting about the red team activities, act assets, and stuff like that. So if you are able to identify that, okay, this IP address or domain name is actually a command and control server of a red team. If you are able to report that one, describe the details and share that one for the other blue teams, that's good for the collaboration because the other blue teams can use that IP also and use it for the detection or blocking. Practical example of the meaningful collaboration. If it would be more like incident reporting that we saw something, we were able to prevent that one case closed. It's not that beneficial for the others. So that's the reason why we are focusing to the threat actor on, on a technical reporting. Then we have more these military 
kind of reporting sit reps twice a day, how you are doing, list your key events, what has happened during the time period. But also, again, we assess those and check, is it something that would actually, actually benefit someone top of you in a chain of command? Because even in the civilian side, you have to report about the stuff. And basically the language, the level of details, stuff like that. So is it understandable if someone gets that one, they would actually understand what's going on with you guys. Okay, injects. They are about, the basic exercise is about red team attacking blue teams, but there's a lot of things going on on top of that, and that's also the real life. You have to handle the media. There might be something which is related to media. Legal things might pop up. We also have a lot of scenario injects, which are not directly related on red team activities, but there's a request that the blue teams needs to do something. That wouldn't happen in real life. You are in the middle of incident response and some random requests pops up that, hey, I need the answer to this one right away. Forensics, of course. Why it's that low? My personal opinion is that in case of incident res response, when, the, when you have problem in your systems and you're trying to resolve that one, your main focus should be how to fix that one. If you have time or capability to get the forensic samples out of that one and someone can actually do the forensics for that one, that's good. It might provide meaningful information, but often it will take some time and it's not that helpful when everything is on fire. You might have different opinion. And last, last and least, it's the reverts and special scores. So reverts are something that if blue teams are able to completely mess up their systems, they can request for the revert of that VM. So no one can access that one anymore. The services are not running. Can we have like fresh <laughs> version of that one? There's of course penalty in that one. Like in real life that if you need to buy services or new servers from some place, to replace the broken ones. But at the same time, the version the blue teams are getting through the revert is the initial version with all the happiness the red team has <laughs> put there. So it's not like turnkey solution to have cleared and totally empty system. So it's the initial system. And special scoring is something when something unexpected something which we cannot expect beforehand. We need to give some kind of special score that they did something really well or they break the rules or something. So it's only to balance the scoring for these people who want to have, wants to have competition. Assessment is done independently. Even availability and usability, you might think that's the same thing. But no, we think that when we are doing the assessment independently, and then when we see anomalies, it helps that we know that these sets of information com comes from the independent sources. So it's easier for us to check, is it about this source, it's providing bad information, or is there something actually going on? If we would bundle all of them together, we would lose the trackability in a sense that, is it the algorithm which is breaking the things up, or is there something actually wrong? But I think that's one of the underlying in important points that do the assessment independently and then combine the results, not the other way around. I think the same model, if you think about real life, this would be it. Identify the main, main objectives, get meaningful measurement on those ones, and build a picture based on that one. I have a couple of simple use cases just to get an idea what kind of questions and requests yellow team gets. Number one is that blue team seems to be incredibly strong against the red team. For some reason, nothing does work what the red team is trying to do. What we can do? We can easily check the usability and availability. If the end users are happy, if the systems are online, maybe the blue team is just good. <laughs> And red team, try harder. Yep. 
but most of the times, usually, the end users are complaining, services are not available, and it's one of the rules that you have to keep up the services and help the end users. So we can usually encourage the blue teams that, hey, put your systems up or special score. Uh, then if we want, the, want to make like assessment about the blue teams, are they in proactive or reactive mode? Because ah, this is important also. My personal opinion, in cyber defense, time is the key element. Who controls the time will win the fight. So usually the case starts that the enemy has been in your networks for weeks, months, years. And then you will know that something fishy is going on. How you can turn the table that you will control the situation. They have been doing stuff years already. How can you take the initiative out of their hands and handle the situation through that one? Everything is time related. If you can control that one, you can handle the situation. How can we see that one from the situation awareness? All the reports, stuff they are doing, we are giving them almost uh, feedback almost in real time. If you just follow, for example, the re reporting scoring, does it go up or down? We provide the feedback after every, every round, they provide, provide us reports that what was good, what was bad, these are the things you should focus on on your next report. Are they able to take that information and put that one in use? You can easily follow that from the scores. Is the scores going down or up? Usually when you are busy, you're losing the control. The reporting is something you will drop first. You just try to hack the firewall. If you cannot report clearly, usually it's a sign that you are already on a reactive mode and losing the fight. Second one is also that this is also related on time. We can quite easily see that are the blue teams actually running after the red team. Red team sets something on fire and then they will go like the ants into that place and they cannot do anything else. If you want to be the winner in lock shields, you have to excel on every area of the exercise. So just by looking at these non-technical elements, injects, forensics, reporting, how well the blue teams are performing on that one, usually it's a sign that they are in control of their doing or not. Couple more. Blue teams have done something wrong, wrong, clearly. Maybe we have already given like warning already, but still they try to bend the rules. So we have to figure out what would be like proper compensation for that kind of activity. Is it minus 100, minus 1000 or minus 5000? I think we have used all of those. And the four, fourth one is, that's hypothetical, because there's never ever problems with the infrastructure, which might affect one or multiple teams, and some downtime or something, how to compensate that one. But that's hypothetical, like I said. It doesn't happen. But if it would happen, <laughs> we could use <laughs> situation awareness to come up with the compensation. Key takeaways. Challenge me, but I would argue monitoring is not the same thing as situation awareness. Identify your key elements, so it doesn't matter is it like exercise or real life, what not. What is the main importance? Why do we have these IT system services? What, what's the purpose for them? What's the business capabilities, what not, on top of that? And what's important to them? Identify those elements, get meaningful information out of them and meaningful in a sense that if you have to make a decision related on that, what information is meaningful for the decision making? Most likely it's not the temperature of some part of the process. And then when you are making those uh, decisions, have a means to follow how does, how does your decision affect the overall overall system. Questions? I can start. 
Do you know what's the main question I'm asked like multiple times per exercise? What's the situation? <laughs> Usually my answer is, this is fine, it's fine, even if something is burning. But in overall, <laughs> from the decision-making point of view, it's nothing. It's only a blue team who's owned by the red team or something wrong with the green team side of the things. But from the overall point of view, it's fine. Situation is fine. And if there's a problem, you will know. So. So, any questions? Okay. Come like, on, this yeah. is like in Tallinn. Ah. <laughs> Always have the yellow team presentation, no questions. <laughs> That's a good Jarko. Thank you.